up a chair and join me today Out in my workshop I'm tinkering away Wand above staring down on me Wonder what my next project will be Working on my Johnson, my Mercury Mark 10 Firing up my Starcraft to fish again Grab your friends and your dog is too To watch Tim's Workshop on my YouTube Hey, welcome to Tim's Workshop Out here on the 60 Horse Merc Gonna do some electrical testing for you Been getting requests to do so So we're gonna get into this And uh, make a uh, maybe two or three part series on uh, different tests in series on checking things. Uh, this thing's running good, so I don't really have any issues with it, but I wanted to show you how to go about testing this if you do have an issue, okay? So let's get going here. If you like the videos, please subscribe, leave comments, hit the notification bell, give me a like, hit the hand thing, and let your friends and family know about my videos too. So here we go. Okay, before you start here on the testing, uh, first thing you gotta do is make sure your battery, your uh, cranking battery is fully charged because the, uh, the test on here, we're gonna do, we're gonna put water in the barrel, okay? Because of the impeller. You wanna make sure your uh, cranking battery your starting battery is in good shape so it should be like 12.4 12.5 uh, volts when you uh, measure it with your multimeter okay set it on volts DC volts there is a difference this is uh, AC volts and this is DC volts down here okay so when you're checking the battery, set it down on 20 volts. You want to set it higher than the reading that you're uh, obtaining. Okay. And then with your leads, you test the positive and negative on the battery and see if you have 12, 12.5 volts. If you're good there and the battery's charged, then what you do is start the motor in the water barrel so you got water circulating you're not ruining the uh, impeller if you just start this thing without water for just a few seconds you, you're gonna screw up your impeller and you don't want to do that so always have water on your uh, motor whether you're cranking or starting it as far as the uh, charging system on uh, one of these 60 horse Mercs I found some information in here that I thought I would share with you Okay, I'm going to read it to you. The outboard ignition system is an alternator driven with distributor-less capacitor discharge. Major components of the ignition system are the flywheel, stator, trigger, switch box, ignition coils, and spark plugs. The stator assembly is mounted stationary below the flywheel and has two capacitor charging coils. The flywheel is fitted with permanent magnets inside the outer rim. As the flywheel rotates, the permanent magnets pass charging coils. This causes the capacitor charging coils to produce AC voltage. The AC voltage then is conducted to the switch box where it is rectified and stored in a capacitor. The trigger assembly, also mounted underneath the flywheel, has three coils, okay? The flywheel has a second set of permanent magnets located around the center hub. So I haven't had this flywheel off to like actually see what's on the inside, but it sounds like there's two areas. As the flywheel rotates, the second set of magnets pass the trigger coils. This causes the trigger coils to produce AC voltage that is conducted to an electric silicon controlled rectifier, okay, SCR, in the switch box. The switch discharges the capacitor voltage into the ignition coil at the correct time and firing order sequence. 
Capacitor voltage is conducted to the primary side of the ignition coil. The ignition coil multiplies this voltage high enough to jump the gap at the spark plug. The preceding sequence occurs once per engine revolution for each cylinder. Spark timing is changed, advanced, retarded by rotating the trigger assembly which changes each trigger coil position in relation to the permanent magnets on the flywheel center hub. Okay, so that's that. Now, important. If the engine misfires, runs rough, or does not start, the ignition system should be checked using a multimeter DVA tester or a voltmeter capable of measuring 400 volts DC or higher, and direct voltage adapter, and I've showed you that. You want to start it, and we'll take the multimeter up, set it on... Uh, your DC volts again and set it on 20 and then check to see if you have like 13, 13.5 13 to 14 volts. If you do, that means your charging system's working properly. If it says 12.4 or 12.5 still, but the motor's running, something's wrong with your charging system. In order to figure out what that is, uh, you have to do some testing on it. For the first uh, test on this, you want to test each spark plug for spark. And you put this on your spark plug tester. And out here, you know, it's the sun shining and all that, you know. But I've already tested this, and I know all three spark plugs are working properly. But that's how you go about uh, testing it, okay? Use one of these. And make sure you have spark on all, all three cylinders. If you don't, there's a symptom thing that'll tell you what's going on. If you're missing spark on all of these, or on one of them, or just two out of the three. So if there's a intermittent spark, or no weak or no spark, at two plugs, usually means a bad trigger. Now the trigger's up where the stator is, and the trigger has an arm on it, and that's your uh, that's your uh, advance, timing advance. It has an arm on it, and it's connected to your uh, control rods on the other side. So that's what the trigger is. So if you have two out of the three plugs bad, they're not getting spark, it means a bad trigger, okay? So and there's a there's a way of testing the trigger to isolate the trigger and just test the trigger as far as resistance uh, if there's intermittent weak no spark output at all three spark plugs that means a bad stator up here or the switch box the switch box is right here it has all these wires going to it and there's a way of testing that too to see if that's bad See if the stator's bad, there's a test for that, all that. We'll be going through that, but not on, on, this, all the, on this video. This is just the, the beginning part one video. If intermittent, weak, or no spark at any one spark plug, one out of the three, this is a three cylinder, uh, usually means a bad spark plug. So it's an easy way of testing that. Just take the one that's not sparking and switch it with one of the ones that is and see if that cured the problem. If that cured the problem, then you know it's a spark plug. If it's still bad, putting the spark plug up here, still not sparking, then you know probably a coil that's bad or a switch box. So that's the symptoms. So you can learn a lot just by testing your spark. Now you're gonna check the coil, right? Well, when you check the coils, you're checking from this lead here to the ground, okay? From this lead here to the ground, from this lead to the ground, okay? There's three of them. So when you check it, you want a DVA, which is a voltage, direct voltage adapter and this is the negative that's a positive you plug it in here the negative goes in the com the 
positive goes over here for uh, volts, which is 600 max. And we're going from, we set this on DC, and we're going to set it up at 600 volts because the testing on these things goes from, uh, I'm not sure about this, 210 to 250 volts. So if we set it at 200, that wouldn't be high enough because the range is up to 250. So we're going to go at 600. And then I have, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang this, right, so we can read it. I got to put some strings through here or something with a washer or something with a loop on it. And that way I can hang it up here off the bolt or up off here. I don't want to get it in the starter. We'll figure it out. And then we'll hook this uh, to the uh, positive. Make sure you got a good connection on these. And we can hook it over here to the negative side, but if we hook it over here where these have like little jumpers going off the negative side to this plate over here, and this plate is grounded. Hook it over there to the ground location. So we're ready to uh, crank this up. I got water in the barrel so the impeller won't get damaged. I have my uh, direct voltage adapter plugged in my moldy meter. I have it set at 600 DC. And I got uh, hooked up my jumper key uh, cord that I made and plugged each uh, one of these into the spark plug boots. So, so this is all grounded, okay? And it says to ground, make sure the switch box is grounded well to the case. Well, this is plastic, it's in a rubber boot. There's no independent ways of uh, grounding this. It does have a ground wire that comes off and it's grounded up here, the same location that the uh, solenoid ground is hooked up to. So I think we're okay, but I, I remembered when you're cranking this, um, when you're testing, you should have uh, the spark plug boots grounded if you don't need to start the engine, which we're not. We're just cranking it. So we're ready to go. So let's see what we get for volts. Okay, we've got 183. Okay, well, that's pretty low. It should be, according to this, and the coils should be 210 to 250. And I, we were at like 180. Yeah, we're uh, on the low side. Well, let's try it again. So, according to the book here, checking the coil primary, right? Serial number G. 0G277605 and below, we would be good. 300 to 1000 RPM, we'd be right in there. But it's not. This serial number that I have is 298 something, which is above. So the coil primary is for 145 to 175, which is over and then up to 1,000 RPM voltage is 210 to 250. So what we're gonna do here, I don't think, just to eliminate something, we're gonna undo these. We're gonna plug it in.
I think this motor has to be running to do this test. We'll see if it makes a difference anyway. Okay, let's plug in the fuel. You're still on? Yep. Pump this up. Okay, it's firm. Let's start this up and see what we get for the reading for, for this. Now let's see where we're at on the book. There we go. So this test, you have to have the engine running. Okay. Let's go ahead and check the other ones. All right, start it up. See if we got the same reading. Thirty-five. All right, we're good there. Now let's check the bottom one. I didn't have it on the ground, so let's try it again. Yeah, there we go. Two thirty. We're good. And also, the, it has a red stator under here, okay? The red stator, there's a section in here for the red stator that I found as I was reading through this thing, trying to figure out if the engine's supposed to be running to check these coils or cranking. Quite a difference in the voltage between 180 and 235. ADI ignition using a red stator with an adapter module. This is the adapter module over here that's part of the stator. They have to, they kind of go together, okay, for this particular model. So that's what I have here. Now, there's another section for co uh, coil primary. Okay, red stator DVA test, red stator adapter with ignition coil. So that's what we have. So this is what we really should be going by, is this section over here. Okay, so the primary coil, and it doesn't say anything about having the motor runner or cranking. It still didn't do that. So I'm kind of uh, just going by the reading reads right if, you, if the engine's running. <laughs> okay. And we were getting 234, 235, right? The voltage for the coils. And at 1,000 RPM, which 900 is pretty close to 1,000, we had 235, okay? So it's in the ballpark there. So I think that's what we were supposed to go by. Now, if you're testing the uh, red stator resistance, that's where you're just checking with your ohm meter. The electric start engines, red stator, this is how you check it to see if the, the ohms is uh, right on the uh, red stator, okay? It has one for manual start engines too, which is a little different. 
and then it has uh, your troubleshooting procedures here, your ohms readings or volts, you know. So you go by, by this, which is pretty much what we've already done as far as on the coil. So, so that's it. So the coils are good. Okay, that's it for this uh, first test on the uh, Mercury 60 horse, checking out the uh, coils so you know how to do that. My coils are good. I got spark on all three plugs, uh, so we're good. Now, if you didn't have spark, like I said, on one of the plugs, this is how you go about testing your coils to see if you have an issue with the, uh, the coil. Basically, the one that's going to the spark plug that uh, is not getting spark. And like I said, if you're not getting spark to one of these spark plugs, swap the spark plugs around first to see if it's actually just a spark plug that's bad. Okay? Cheap fix. Coils cost a lot more. <laughs> so you like the video, please subscribe, leave comments, hit the notification bell. And if you like, give me a like. Hit the old hand thing. So uh, let your friends and family know about my videos, and then till next time, we'll see ya.